this is James here from Metropolis Productions. Uh, we've had some amazing feedback on the uh, Ableton videos that I put up online a few months ago. Had some great emails back, had some phone calls and comments on the uh, videos themselves. So what I thought I'd do is actually do another video. The qu main question that we've had here is, is that I'm going to address today is where do we actually get the material from, where do we source it from and how do we actually prepare it for the Ableton Live set that we use live. So I'm going to get on and talk about that today. First thing I'm going to let you know is I'm actually going to put some more information on my website, my personal website, that's jameseager.com. You're more than welcome to go and have a look at that and if you've got any questions please do email me. So where do we get the studio tracks from? They come from a variety of sources. These could be professional studios, I've used them before. They could be done myself. I have been known to sit on aeroplanes and program drum grooves or do backing vocal sessions in hotel rooms. But there are actually a number of great sources on the internet now where we can get these from. My personal favourite is from a company called Paris Music. They've actually supplied the track we're going to be using today, so thanks to those guys. So please do check them out. I really do feel they're great value for money because they're actually sonically excellent but also musically ac accurate too so a great package there so thank you there so moving on how do we prepare my way to prepare is actually really old-fashioned it actually goes down to this the first thing I ever do is I write out a chart now I tend to write out using musical notation but you can write them out however you want what I find this does for me is gives me an overview of the song so I get a global understanding of it but also what I can do is write down some very accurate bar counts so when we're sorting out the loops and the marker sections I know exactly what's going on there. So anyway we're going to transfer over to the computer um, now. If you've liked it please do like or share on Facebook it all makes a difference. Um, so see you on the computer. Many thanks. So I'm going to show you how to prep all your tracks now for Ableton. I'm going to be using today um, the quick track Rather Be from uh, by Clean Bandit. Uh, this has been supplied by Paris Music, as I said earlier. Um, what I, I've got all the tracks now sitting on my desktop. The biggest tip I can give to you is to download all the tracks. The reason being, you never quite know what you're going to need at the end of it. Also, it's so much easier um, being able to actually see and navigate the whole track, having a guy vocal in there. So that's my first tip, is just download all the tracks, even if you think I'm only going to need a string part, for instance. Um, the second one is I'm going to actually uh, is to is to name the tracks as well. Thankfully, this is already done for me. The guys there have done that. So we you can see here sitting on my desktop, I have all the track, all the WAV files sitting there named there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to drag them into the session. Um, sorry, the arrange view even of Ableton. Okay, that's the more linear view, which looks a bit more like Logic, etc. So I'm going to grab all of those. Okay, select them all, and then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull them across like this. Okay, now they always go out, they always come in horizontally. So, but if you press Command, they, they will go, they will, um, they'll stack like this and create new audio tracks in the process. So let that one go, and they will all import like this. Okay, they will take a couple of seconds to come in like this. You get this nice multicolored effect as well. So as you can see, you've now got all the tracks now. My next, uh, the next thing to do, I find really useful, is now to label up all the actual Ableton tracks here at the right hand side. It's really easy because initially in the audio stems, you can see the name there. Um, it's tempting to uh, skip this just to go through a bit for quicker, but later on down the line, this really does actually speed things up having the track names there. So I'm gonna go through and label them all up. Okay, Apple R and I'm going to call that one lead vocal and so on. Now the next thing I like to do is actually just order the tracks. I always like to have the click track at the top like so, move that up the top. And then it's up to you how you stack them from now on but um, I tend to stack with the, with the drums, the bass, the guitar, build the band up that way with BBs and vocals at the end. Something like that normally does, normally works fine. Now the next thing I really strongly recommend doing is to actually just save the Ableton Live set now. Um, now you've basically got all the information in. Really, really easy to do, so I'm going to just go save live set as. Okay. I have a thing called song sequences here. I'm going to make a new folder. Call 
call it rather be. Now the next thing to do is do what's called a collect all and save. Basically what this does is it takes all the audio from wherever it is on the computer, in this case it's sitting on my desktop, and copies it into the Ableton project folder so you're not likely to lose any audio. Okay, you see them copying in there. So to recap on what to do here, so download all the tracks, name the WAV files with the instruments within them, copy them into the arrange view, name all the audio tracks in the arrange view, order the tracks in the sequ in the order that you'd like, and then do save and collect all. So the next thing we need to do is line up the audio stems to the internal Ableton grid so that we can get all the tracks in time. So the next thing is we need to turn on the internal metronome up there, that goes orange up in the top left hand corner, and we need to set the tempo of the track. The tempo of this track actually has two tempos, believe it or not, uh, 115 and 121, but I'm just going to start off by setting the 115. I'll show you how, very, very straightforward, just type in 115 here. Now, the reason I put the click up the top is because what we want to do is try and line up the click so it matches up exactly with the, um, with the t uh, internal template in, uh, in Ableton. So the best way of seeing that is to zoom in, like so, and you can see the click is getting bigger and bigger. I normally put it in around about bar 3 or 4, something like that, so you can see there's a little bit of space off to the left. Um, so I'm going to keep zooming in like that and we'll have a just a quick listen to it to see how it's matching up I think it's pretty good actually but yeah, it's not bad at all but I'm just going to double check by going in even further as you can see as we really zoom in it there is a slot it is slightly out so how we deal with this is we select all the tracks find one of the stems where the beat is, like that, that's absolutely fine, and literally just shift it off to the left, like so. Literally just notched it a tiny bit. Okay, and so we will have a listen to that again. Okay, those sound like they're really tight together. Okay, now we just zoom out again, shift minus, and we can delete all the space which is at the side of, the, uh, um, of where the track starts. So let's just pull it across like that, and that will automatically line up to the beat, like, a little bit too far, to the beat like that. Okay, take it out a little bit, and now we're going to move it over to the beginning of the track. So over all the way over to bar one. Okay, as I said earlier, we actually have two tempos in here. So if I zoom in again, you can see around about bar nine, actually bar ten, you can see it starts to shift off. And so that's why the beat before bar eleven is just a fraction earlier. And that's because we've changed to a tempo of 121 beats per minute. Um, in some ways what I'm going to show you is quite advanced, but what it does is it demonstrates perfectly the real awesome power of Ableton. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to put in the actual uh, tempo um, change to 121. It's very straightforward. We have a song tempo down here. We have two ranges, 115 and 121. Like that. So we're going to get to bar 10, and then I'm at bar 10, I'm going to put in what's called a locator. Um, so we're going to go... You can hear we're no longer in time. And so we have a locator in there, it shows exactly where we are. So I'm going to go to the tempo at the bottom here and automate the tempo. So we're going to go down there, put another tempo marking in, and then at that point just drag it all the way up. 
like that. Okay, and you can now see that everything is perfectly locked into the grid there. The next thing to do is I'm going to show you about warping. And now this actually is a very clever method of being able to manipulate the tempo. And this is where Ableton really comes into its own. Um, what we need to do is we need to separate these into two pieces of audio. So I'm actually going to put what's called a cut in here, which is I'm going to select the locator and I'm going to go Apple E. I need to tell Ableton what tempo these tracks were actually recorded at. Then Ableton can do what's called warping, where it actually mathematically works out all the various tempos and you can speed it up and down. So very straightforward to do. We're going to select that to there, all the way down to the bottom. So those stems are like that. We're going to double click on them. Actually select them all again, like that. And all we do, go down the bottom, press warp. And then if we double click on an individual stem, we can see it's warped to 115 BPM. We can do the same here. OK, we're going to play from here. And that is selected at 121 BPM. We can select it up there, too. I'm going to type in 121 up there just to be on the safe side. And then just exactly the same process again. There we go, we've selected the tracks. I'm going to go warp, like so. And so if I double click on those you can see these are warped to 121 BPM and what this does is it gives me the power to manipulate the tempo across the whole track now I'm not constricted to the first eight bars or ten bars being at 121 BPM and 115 rather and the the rest of it being at 121 uh, I will show you this now I'm gonna start playing from here We're a so let's just try speeding it up so the track is now at 140. We can do the same for the introduction as well. Let me go right from the very beginning. Possibly a bit fast, but what this does is it gives you the it gives you the chance to um, manipulate the tempo actually live on a gig. So if you decide you wanted a couple of BPM faster or slower, you actually aren't constricted to where the track was originally recorded. So to recap, what we've done here is we've we've set the tempo to 115. We've lined up the audio stems uh, with the internal Ableton template. Um, we put a cut point in and then we've warped the tracks to two different tempos 115 BPM and 121 BPM that means we can then manipulate the tempo 